Hello everyone, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe and today's Amigurumi tutorial I show you how to crochet this little hedgehog. I know he has extremely long spikes but I spontaneously decided to keep them <laughs> this long because I think it's really fun. But you can make them shorter of course if you like and yeah I thought that's a different type of hedgehog. So without further ado, let's jump right into that tutorial. For this project we need yarn in a DK or light worsted weight. And I'm using paint box yarns Cotton Decay in Ballet Pink and Banana Cream. We also need yarn in an Aran or worsted weight and this is 100% cotton yarn and it's Rico Creative Aran in brown and I believe this is clay. It may also be smoky pink but it looks more like clay to me so just in case you want to use the same yarn have a look and see which one um, would look better in your opinion. But anyway, you can of course use any yarn you have at home. Um, I just happen to have these colors and these yarns, so that's why I chose to go for them. And it worked out well. So here we have a 2.5 millimeter hook. So that's something in between a size B1 and C2. If you tend to crochet quite loosely, I recommend going for a B1. But if you tend to crochet quite tightly, then you'll definitely get away with a C2 or just 2.5 millimeter if you're in Europe or the UK or wherever you can find this. And then we have a yarn needle just to weave in the yarn ends. There's no sewing involved in this pattern. Well, maybe a little bit, maybe just closing a few gaps with a few stitches but no sewing on of body parts so that's just mainly for weaving in the end and we also have black embroidery floss a little bit and a large eyed sewing needle to embroider this so it's the eye should just be large enough to um, thread the embroidery floss on it and then we have safety eyes these are five millimeter safety eyes but of course you can use any, any size you like or you could also embroider the eyes. It would also look cute if you'd embroider the eyelids with the lashes and so that it looks like a sleeping little hedgehog that would also be very cute. I was thinking about that but then I thought um, I'll just go for safety eyes because they also, they always give life to the little creatures in my opinion but if you're good at embroidery then those um, eyelids and lashes would also be super cute then we have a stitch marker scissors and flat pliers like small pliers like these for jewelry making but this is optional just sometimes when I do my embroidery which is not much if you only embroider the little nose um, but sometimes the needle gets stuck in my work and then I use these pliers to pull it out. So if you have it, great, but if not, don't worry about it. It's definitely optional and there are other ways to get the needle out if it gets stuck. So, not sure if I mentioned the fiber fill, but we also definitely need fiber fill. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started with our little project. So we begin with the little legs and I'm making them in light pink but you could also make them in brown because quite often they are brown and that would also be super cute. But I thought I use light colors so you can better see what I'm doing. So first we make two little forelegs and they are really small and quickly done. So we begin with a magic ring. We just need to keep in mind that we leave a long end with the magic ring so at least maybe 
this long, maybe 20 centimeters, about 8 inches long at least. It should be fine. And just use your preferred magic ring method. Or if you want to learn this one, I have a tutorial in the upper right corner there. Then we begin with six single crochet in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we close the magic ring, but I don't close it too tightly just yet. That's just so it will be easier to start the next round because the first stitch won't be too tight, which sometimes happens because I crochet quite tightly. So in round two, we just single crochet one in each stitch. So, oops, there we go. One, two, Three. Now we can actually close the ring more tightly, but before I just want to pull the end outward because we're going to use it so the magic ring is tightly closed now. the third so now that's four five and six and that's our tiny, tiny four leg done already because the way our little hedgehog is curled up, most of it is actually hidden in his fluffy belly, in his fluffy belly fur. <laughs> so we can fasten this off just to make this round one of the that we made in the magic ring to make it look a little more like a little foot we just make a few stitches with this magic ring yarn end that's another reason why we need the yarn needle i forgot to mention when talking about the materials and tools so we just make a few little stitches You know, just to cover this center of the magic ring, it just looks a bit weird. I tried so many different versions <laughs> for the little legs and feet because I wanted them to have this little, um, a little bit, I mean, they are small, but they are kind of chubby. It's almost like paws, but, um, much smaller so it was it was very difficult because i still wanted the whole project to be small and you know i wanted everything to fit in a video and the little hedgehog to be very small in our hand so that's what i ended up doing just makes it look a little more like a tiny foot so once we've done that we can just stitch through here just weave in this end a bit 
or not maybe that will be enough so that's our little foreleg and we need another one of those so you can go to whichever minute I put here or just repeat it I'm sure you remember because it was just two rounds and then once you've done that we can go ahead and make two hind legs for the hind legs we also start with a magic ring and again we leave the yarn in longer I think like this will be enough I didn't need it quite as long as I thought for the four legs. So for the hind leg, we also start with the six single crochet in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, and six and again we close it but not too tightly also maybe before we start round two this time I already pulled the end to the outside because that's where we'll need it again once we're done now in the second round we simply single crochet in all six stitches Now I just close the magic ring properly. Be careful not to break the yarn though. And now in round three, we double crochet in the next three stitches, but without making a chain or anything, we just go straight to double crochet. So that's one, two, and three. And then in the remaining three stitches, we single crochet again without any chain anything you just go straight in the next stitch single crochet one two and three now in round four we just single crochet in all six stitches again so it's one two three four five and six Here you can fasten off. So this is the little hind leg and it's bent because it will point upward. Because when our little hedgehog is curled in, then that's just how it pops out there. Just peeks out a, a little bit from his fluffy belly fur. <laughs> 
So now we do what we did with the four legs again. So we um, take our yarn needle and thread the yarn and that comes out of the magic ring on our needle. And now again, I make a few stitches just because this doesn't look very foot-like. So just a few stitches to flatten it a bit and also to make it look a bit more like a little foot that should have gone through here would have been better so adjusting that stitch and then I just make a few more stitches and these stitches can go through in between stitches or in between um, fibers they don't have to go through through the fibers like I sometimes do with embroidery one more stitch over here and then we just weave in this yarn end while you're doing that you can close these little gaps between the double crochet stitches if you want another one of those as well so you can go back to whichever minute I'm gonna put here I'll also put a clickable timestamp in the description below so if you just click on that it will lead you to the beginning of how we made this and next we'll make the little ears so now we make the little ears in beige and we're, we're using the DK or light worsted weight yarn. You could also make them in brown if you like, because they often have brown ears. I just chose the lighter colors for this tutorial. And the reason why we're making all the little body parts first is so that we have them ready when they, for when they all get connected, because we don't do much sewing on in this with this little project. So for the ears we make a slip knot to create a little loop because then we chain four. One, two, three, four. Then in the second chain from our hook we single crochet and try to catch two loops when you crochet in the chain. Then in the second chain we half double crochet Again, here it's most important to catch two loops of the chain if you can. Half double crochet. Then we double crochet one in there. And again half double crochet one, in, all in the same chain. Half double crochet, double crochet, and again half double crochet. All in the same chain. And then in the last chain, we single crochet one. Doesn't matter if you only catch one loop there, that's okay. And then we can fasten that off. And this end, we can again pull through the last chain just to bring that closer in. And that's our little ear done. Sometimes they look more rounded than pointy. So that's that's what happened. What sometimes happens with my little cat pattern, but you 
can always make them more pointy by just pushing them in the shape you want. Just a little tip there. And of course we need two of those. So you can go back to this minute in the video to repeat that. You can also click the timestamp in the description to get there. And now we crochet the little head. So we begin again with the magic ring. Oops. That was a bit loose, but that's fine. And then we single crochet four in the magic ring. One, two, three, and four. Now we close the magic ring, but again, I don't close it completely just yet. And with this, such a small round, what I sometimes do to get in the first stitch to start the next round, I just loosen up this loop and then before I actually crochet the stitch, I, oops, I close the loop again to make it tight. So I just insert my hook there. And now I pull my yarn so that the loop gets tight again around my hook. And then I make the first stitch and the first stitch is an increase. So we single crochet two in the first stitch. Then one single crochet in the next stitch. The next one we increase again. So two in there and in the last stitch we single crochet one. Just pull out my loop a bit because now I'm going to close the magic ring completely. Again, be careful not to break your yarn here. I'm using cotton yarn so that's quite robust but if you're using acrylic, acrylic yarn it may not be is strong. So that's round two done. Now in round three we continue with the with the increases. So we start with an increase in the first stitch. So two single crochet in here. Then we single crochet in the next stitch. And then we increase in the next stitch again. So we repeat this three times. One increase. And one single crochet. Oops, let's do that again. And one last time. One increase. And one single crochet. So now our round has nine stitches and in the next round we start with three single crochet Oops. one two and three 
then we increase in the next three stitches that's one increase two increases and three increases and then we single crochet in the last three stitches of the round one two and three and that's the round complete and now we have a round of 12 stitches Now in round five, we continue increasing, but first we single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three, then we increase six times. one increase two increases three increases four increases Five increases. Not sure what's going on with my yarn here, but I'm just going with it. And six increases. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then three single crochet in the next three stitches that's two and three and now our round has 18 stitches so now we can already go ahead and embroider the little nose because now that the face is still very small, it's actually easier. So now we embroider the little nose and for that we need the black embroidery floss or you could also use dark brown if you like and the large eyed sewing needle. So you can thread the, the embroidery floss on your needle and I'm actually redoing this, I've done it before and sometimes I'm just not happy with the result and I redo it so I encourage you whenever you're not quite happy with the result just redo it because that would be a shame if you sit down three hours for this project and then in the end something little like the nose um, you know makes you not be 100% happy with it so I just stitched through from the inside out in the center of the first round in the center of the magic ring but if you catch a few fibers of one of the stitches there that's actually good because that give, gives you a little more control over where the stitch goes and then the stitch marker I put in that's that's the top of the face so just so you know where the top is that helps with the nose embroidery although it's really just a black dot but it can help so between the third and fourth increase that we made in the last round that we crocheted that's where the top is so increase number three increase num increase number three increase number four yeah that's where the top is just so you know so I'm making a few 
vertical stitches So easy now because I've stitched through there before <laughs> but it's much easier this time around so maybe you need your little pliers if you have them okay that's much better than before okay now I make a few horizontal stitches out first before I stitch through just to make sure it's the place I want it to go and that one's really tricky there we go you can leave it at the um, vertical stitches you don't have to do the horizontal ones especially if you don't have pliers and it's a little bit difficult Oops. so with the last stitch I go back to the inside of my work just have to be careful not to poke my finger so make sure to remove your fingers before you do that Actually looks a bit weird again but I'll just fix it this time by adding another stitch on this side looks better than before at least no but there you can see I accidentally stitched through in between stitches and this way it didn't go where I wanted to go so that's just a reminder to stitch through the stitches through the actual fibers if you're doing embroidery so I divide this into two stitches to make sure it goes where I want it so I want this side to be more covered, so let's stitch through there. And then I stitch back. out and here through the same spot to complete this stitch so I made one stitch in two stitches just to make sure it goes where I want it to okay that's better
Okay, so then once you're happy with the nose, you can just tie the, the embroidery thread ends together and cut them a bit shorter. And this means we can continue with crocheting the head now. So now we can move the stitch marker to the actual last stitch here just so we know that it's there so what we do next in addition to making the face larger or the head we crochet a little base to which we will attach the legs so in order to do that, we crochet as many stitches as it takes to get to the bottom, you know, to the chin, so to speak. So here where you can see this little gap here in this stitch, that's the top because that's just where I had the stitch marker to show where the top of the face is. So that's where it is. And we want to get to the opposite side bottom here so for me this means one single crochet maybe different for you and then here we chain four one two three four that was low battery mode, so I just repeat this in case, in, in case I got cut off. So we made four chains and then in the second chain from counted from our hook, we single crochet one and then single crochet one in the next chain and one in the next chain. And this counts, oops. This little base of the body of the belly counts as counts as six stitches now. So the other side of the chain counts um, as three stitches as well. So then we start with an increase in the next stitch of the round here in the head. So we increase here, then we single crochet in the next two, one and two, and this we repeat five times. So increase and one, two, that was two. Increase one, two, that was three. Increase one and two. That's four and in here, oops. one increase in here, then single crochet in the next two. And then we have two stitches left and in the next one we make another increase and in the last stitch we make one single crochet and that's the round done
So now for the next round, we need all the little body parts. So these are the hind legs. The four legs. And the ears. So now we take the first four leg and we attach that one now. So we single crochet in all the six stitches of the four leg. So we just see how we want it to be crocheted on and that determines where we insert our hook first. So I just wanted to peek out there like this. So. So that would mean that I should probably insert it in a stitch on top if I want this to be the top. I just see how it looks. You can always undo a few stitches. That's not a big deal if it helps, you know, make your little hedgehog the way you like. So there's one stitch I made in the front leg and the next stitch is the last stitch of the round of the front leg. So here just be aware, hold on to this yarn end if necessary or just crochet the stitch and afterwards you need to close this really well. Okay, now I can already see we'll see how it looks. I just finished. So that's the second one. Then the third stitch goes in here because that was the beginning of the round. That's that was there. Four, five, and last one in the leg. Six. And now the next stitch goes in the regular next stitch of our round, which is here still on the um, face or the head. So in there goes one single crochet and then you can already see how this foreleg looks. So that's how it it's attached now and I'm okay with that. I just wanted the, because this is the top now. That's where the eyes will go, somewhere here. So this is how it will peek out of there and I'm happy with that. So now... So next we have two single crochet, one we already made here. And the next single crochet goes in the other side of the, this base chain that we made here so that would be here that makes two single crochet and then we attach the first hind leg now the hind leg my hedgehog is upside down now so I wanted to you know point upward like so and now I'm trying to start with the this stitch which is the last stitch of the leg it doesn't matter if it's the first or last stitch what matters is how the leg where the leg is pointed once you're done attaching it so that's one two three four five and six and 
then the next two single crochet again go here in the other side of the base chain that we made in the previous round I just make one for now to see where my leg is pointed now now I'm just deciding if that's good or if, because now it's pointing upward a little inward but maybe it's good this way No, just trying to close this. Okay, I think that's fine. So, one single crochet we already made. And then the next single crochet goes in the other side of the last chain here. And then we make two more single crochet. Here on the other side in the proper stitches that we have here on the other side so one and two whoops there we go and now we attach the other leg so just have a look where you want to insert your first stitch so I'm thinking here, let's try that out. So now we single crochet in all six stitches of the other hind leg. Two, three, four, five, and six with the last stitch of the round of the leg again make sure to pull that end tight and now we single crochet in the next two stitches now this one we already crocheted in so the next one is this one here And then the next one is this tiny one here that I must have missed. <laughs> and now we can crochet in the around the six in the six stitches of the last leg, the second four leg here. So just have a little think about how you want to attach that. I'll just try starting in here here because I wanted to be attached in a similar way as the the other side so six single crochet around here one two Three, four, five, just pulling that in tight there, and six. Sorry, that's difficult to show you. Six, one is there. Now we have so many yarn ends of all the different body parts. But the good thing is we can use them as stuffing, <laughs> so we won't need as much fiber fill. Okay, so now the next stitch goes in here. I'll make one single crochet in the next stitch for now just to see how it looks. And I'm happy with that, so these will go up like so. Okay, happy with that. So now, 
here we're after the leg we're supposed to single crochet four one I've already done so three more one two three and now it's time to attach the ears so we just put them on the head right sides facing so by right side I mean the front of the ear so if this is the front and this is the back we want the front to be facing the face which is the other right side and that's like sewing two pieces together with the sewing machine almost so now we go through the the other side of the chain of the ear the other side of the first chain and then we go in the next stitch here and then we just single crochet both layers together then we go in the other side of the next chain of the ear and then in the next stitch pick up the yarn pull it through and single crochet both layers together and then in the other side of the next chain of the ear in the next stitch pick up the yarn pull it through and single crochet both layers together so that's the first ear attached so now we single crochet in the next eight stitches one two three four five six seven and eight and now we attach the second ear so again if you look at this as the front and then this the back the front is the right side so to speak so the right side faces the face which is the other right side so we crochet both layers together so first I go through the other side of the first chain and then through the next stitch and single crochet then through the the other side of the next chain of the ear and through the next stitch and single crochet both layers together and then through the other side of the last chain of the ear and through the next stitch and single crochet both layers together and now the second ear is attached so now there should be four stitches remaining of our round and we just single crochet one in each one two three and four And that's the difficult part done it's not the most laborious part <laughs> if I'm honest that's still to come with the little spikes all over but um, the most difficult part is done now in round eight we have quite a bit of decreasing to do so we start with a decrease so here we single crochet the next two stitches together I also have a video tutorial on um, invisible single cr crochet decreases which I'll link to up in the corner so we just single crochet the front loop of the next two stitches together so if you haven't done that before you can check out that tutorial first so that's one decrease then we single crochet in the next two stitches one and two then we decrease 
two times so the next two stitches so this is a bit tricky so you can hold the legs apart here to see the stitches so that's one decrease and the next one so if you just gently just take your time then it's not as difficult <laughs> as it looks so then we single crochet in the next six stitches now one two three oh sorry the next four stitches i think four right in the next five stitches then we decrease two times in a row again so oops so maybe the tricky part is not behind us <laughs> so that's one decrease another decrease now single crochet in the next five stitches Now we have two decreases in a row again, so one here, and oh, the next two are tiny stitches, so Oops, just take your time with that. One front loop and the next one is even more small it's even smaller there we go so oops no lost my loop Okay, that's the second decrease done. Now we single crochet two, one and two, and we decrease again. So now we just single crochet in the last 20 stitches around the head here just something i noticed these yarn ends should have gone to the inside of course now they're outside of the stitches but that's not a problem we can just pull them through so that they're on the correct side we go that's all done now
so now we just single crochet one in each stitch which should be 20 stitches So now our round is complete and now we have a stitch count of 42 and in the next round we keep decreasing that so we just um, single crochet in the next five stitches one two three four and five and then we decrease so mm, carefully insert your hook in the next front loop and then in the next front loop so we repeat that six times all together that was one now again one two three four and five I know I crochet quite tightly up until now if you're the same as me I just crochet so tightly so I don't have so many gaps here but now maybe it's time to loosen it up because the way we attach the spikes we don't want super tight stitches just a little warning there so and a reminder to myself one two three four five okay now we have a decrease again So as you can see it's super difficult for me to <laughs> decrease because of the tight stitches. I try to loosen up my stitches a little bit now. <laughs> Otherwise the attaching the spikes part will be difficult. So that's one, two, Three, four, and five. And another decrease. And again five single crochet and decrease five single crochet one two three four five and decrease one two three four, five, and last decrease of the round. So now I'll just secure my stitch for a bit. 
because next I want to close some of the gaps. <laughs> they look so weird without spikes. So now we can, if you have some gaps here, here in the middle of the belly, for example, where we crochet in both sides of the chain, that's where you might have some gaps like I do, or maybe here between the limbs and the body. So we can just use one of the many yarn ends that we have here. Maybe not the pink ones, but the beige ones. Just get the pink ones out of the way. And make sure I'm not attaching the working end. So I'll just go for this one. Just thread my yarn needle and with this one I just go through here so I can close these gaps of the chain with a few stitches. Just also close this gap here. Oops. And then I'll also use the same yarn and to make a little stitch here. Close the little gap. That's fine. And then one little stitch here to close the little gap of the other hind leg there. And then that's that's enough for this yarn and I think so then I just weave that in for a bit which secures it so it doesn't come loose I just do that on the inside of my work with these tight stitches that I made that should be secure now already so then I just Thread another yarn end. This one's longer. And this one I just weave in toward the four legs. Just on the inside here, just so I can use it there to close the little gaps that have built between the forelegs and the body. So you can do this all in one go, actually. You don't have to go one one like me okay so here now I'm at the right spot just making a little stitch there maybe one more through here And 
end then all the all the pink yarn is out of the way then I'll move to the other side if your yarn is still long enough otherwise you can find another one Again, stitch through on the inside of the work just you know if I would go straight go there then I might cause some tension inside the amigurumi some tension on this yarn and, and that may mess with the shape of it which of course we don't want Okay, now I'll go through here. Make a little stitch there. Ooh. Careful not to unthread. And one more little stitch here. It's all the sewing that we'll do, I promise. <laughs> now we just weave in this end with a few stitches on the inside of our work. There we go. Okay. So now the gaps here are closed. So next, before we continue crocheting, we can go ahead and attach the safety eyes. So last time with my first little hedgehog, I attached the eyes between around five and six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and quite far apart. So because I'm using cotton yarn, uh, it's difficult to get these safety eyes in. So I always widen the gaps a little bit, but very carefully, just with my scissors and I make sure my scissors are closed. And I don't da damage the yarn. I'm, doing that very gently just so I can get the safety eyes in more easily and even if I change my mind that's not a big problem because I just gently go in between the stitches and they just go again um, back into position if I change the position of the eyes so don't worry about that just be careful when doing that so you don't damage any of the fibers. Just want to make sure that goes completely in so we can see how it really looks. Okay. <laughs> and now on the other side, maybe here, let's, let's try if that's the right spot. So I just gently stretch the yarn a little bit. want to make sure with this side as well that it's inserted properly so that we can really see how it looks <sighs> mm. 
so I think that's that's good happy with that position okay so I won't secure them just yet so I can keep looking at it just in case so only secure them once you're really 100% sure about the placement of the safety eyes now we can for now continue with our next round and in the next round we keep decreasing so this time we single crochet in the next four stitches two three and four and decrease Now in this round, I'm really careful with not crocheting too tightly. If your tension is regular, don't worry, then you're good. But <laughs> if you tend to crochet very tightly as well, then keep an eye on the tension. Decrease again. So we repeat this six times in total, four single crochet and one decrease. So that once the round is complete, we will have a stitch count of 30. And decrease one, two, three, oops, four, and decrease then one. Two, three, four, and decrease, and one, two, three, four, and decrease. So now we have a round of 30 stitches. And now it would be a good time to secure the safety eyes if you're happy with the placement. So I'm gonna secure them now. Just pop these on firmly. Oops. it's easier if you turn the head inside out okay that's okay here we go <laughs> so these ears if they are too round you can always squeeze them in shape
Okay, so now we continue with the next round and we just keep decreasing. So this time we single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and decrease. And again, we repeat this six times in total. One, two, three, and one, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, Decrease one, two, three. Oops, decrease one, two, three, and So now I'm going to start filling the little hedgehog and before I stuff all these yarn ends in I just make sure that the nose is nicely filled, the little snout. After that we can just stuff, put in all these yarn ends, but around the safety eyes it's probably easier with this, with this fiber fill. So just make sure it goes in between the safety eyes and all around. You can push it in with your hook, with the other side of it. just want to make sure that it goes everywhere. You can also squish it together before pushing it in. And once you feel like the head is nicely filled, you can also push in the yarn ends more toward the body. Oops, just make sure you don't work in your working yarn end, of course. <laughs> okay, and we can add more. We can top that up later. Now, in the next round, we single crochet two and then we decrease. So 
So while I'm crocheting, I'm pushing in the filling just to make sure we don't work it in our stitches. So again, we repeat this six times all together. One, two, and decrease. One, two, and decrease. Oops. There we go. One, two, and Decrease one, two, decrease, and one last time one, two, and decrease. So now we can add more fiber fill. Or if you prefer, we can do the next round first. I'll do the next round first. And there will still be enough space to squeeze in more. So this time we single crochet one. And then we decrease, so we reduce our... Now, how many do we have? 18 stitches to 12. So one... Single crochet and one decrease. One single crochet and one decrease one single crochet and one decrease one single crochet and one decrease and once more one single crochet and one decrease is definitely the last chance to get in some fiber fill so make sure the body is and the, the body and the head are nicely filled So I just add some more in every corner.
and there we go so once once it's nicely filled everywhere we can go ahead and crochet the last round so in the last round we simply decrease six times that's one decrease and two three Four, five, and one more to go. Start over. The last one is the trickiest. That's six. So that's the last one done. So here we can fasten off. And now all that's left to do for that part is close this last round. So we need our yarn needle again. And we simply insert our hook in the front loops of each stitch, each of the six stitches that around now has. That's three, four, five, and six. Now again, be careful not to pull too tight, don't break your yarn, but once you inserted the yarn in through all front loops, you can pull tight carefully. And then we go through the center of the last round here, and now we just go somewhere on the body, stitch through and just pull that one in so that the back gets nice and flat. It is slightly rounded, that's normal, but this little bump there goes away. And then we just weave in our yarn end with a few stitches. My yarn end is woven in now, so then you can just cut it short. Map. <laughs> There's our little hedgehog, looks so funny without spikes. But he's gonna get his spikes now. So, that's the part that may take a while, to be honest. So now we need our iron or worsted weight yarn and I'm using these two colors. You can make the spikes in the same color of course if you like. I just wanted to have them mixed. And now we cut, just cut many, many little pieces so we can attach the spikes using the regular method of attaching for example doll hair to crochet dolls um, that's the same way we do this so we just need to cut them long enough um, so that we can attach them comfortably so that's 
Okay, so about three inches and I'm just cutting for now a few of both colors at the same time just to speed things up. Just do it this way. So honestly, I'm not sure how many you need. I didn't finish this part with my first hedgehog. I didn't have time for that. So we'll see, you can just do little batches, attach them and then see if you need more. So now I'm just starting here around the head to attach them. And for that, I'm just inserting my hook here and going through under a stitch. And sometimes it's inevitable to if um, you may pull out some of the fiber fill, try not to, but if you do that, that's fine. You can just cut it off as long as it's not too much. Oh, okay. So then we just fold the um, little piece of yarn in half and at the middle loop that we created this way, we hook our yarn in there and pull that through under the stitch And then we just grab one of the pieces of yarn and fold it in half like so, so that we have a loop there. And that loop we just pull through the stitch. And then we grab those two yarn ends. Oops, <laughs> don't pull it out too far. Grab those two yarn ends and pull it through the loop. And then you can pull that tight, as tight as possible. And that's the first one attached and later we cut it all so don't worry about that now this way we just go all around and I just do one in brown and one in beige pull that through at the middle and then I Grab the two yarn ends and pull them through the loop, pull it tight. So that takes a little while, but I hope it will be worth it. So this way we just go all around body and then inward toward the center here and I keep very close to the legs here because I want them because he's really curled in so you know when they curl in and only the legs peek out so <laughs> I want the spikes to go everywhere very close to the legs So it's the next day now and last night I attached all the all these yarn pieces, the spikes. And honestly I didn't count them, but I can tell you I went in between most stitches um, to attach one piece of yarn. So you can see there's almost no space. But it worked really well, so I rarely pulled out any of the fiber fill or anything like that. So, oh, here's a little gap. 
maybe I need to attach one more there we'll see um, but first we're gonna cut them so I'm not gonna lie it took about um, it took about two hours <laughs> to do that but you know this kind of things I usually do when I watch something in the evenings with my husband unless it's too interesting and I fully need to focus but <laughs> Usually I prefer for crocheting anyway, so I, I didn't feel that it took two hours at all. I was looking at the clock and suddenly two hours had passed, so it was really fun actually seeing this little hedgehog take shape. So now all that's left to do is cut these ends and initially I was planning on cutting them quite a bit shorter but now I'm thinking it actually looks cute if they stay longer so you can always cut them shorter later so I just start at this length and I just keep them like this and then then I see how it looks and then I can always make it shorter and anyway, we shouldn't cut them too short. I mean, with my trial hedgehog, I cut them about this length, but I hadn't fully attached them. So only a small part I attached and that was fine. So um, because we made these little knots, if we cut them too short, um, maybe they would come loose, which wouldn't be good. But, um, yeah, I think I like to keep them a bit longer anyway. But if you go for this length, even it, it should be fine. They shouldn't come loose unless um, your little hedgehog will be played a lot with. <laughs> then I'm not sure I haven't tried that. But anyway, I'm happy with the longer spikes just because I think it's fun. So all this I'm going to use as filling, so I'm not throwing it away because that makes excellent stuffing for my next amigurumi. And I'm just fluffing it up a bit to see where I need to maybe cut more. I think that's cute. I think I'm gonna keep it at that length. So I'm just holding it back now. And I think I'll attach a few more pieces of yarn to the back because the back looks a bit um, looks a bit empty. Could be fuller there.
give me the little shake. <laughs> I think I think I like it this way. I'll keep it that way. I'll just tidy it up a little more on this side. Oops, anywhere else. Yep, I think that's it. <laughs> So that's our little hedgehog done. Thank you so much for crocheting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you did, feel free to like this video and also make sure to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future Amigurumi tutorials. I now, po I now post them on Saturdays instead of Sunday, so keep your eyes peeled for the next one. Also, if you're making this little hedgehog or any of my amigurumi creatures, whether it's with a free pattern or one you bought, feel free to share your creation and tag me at Stella's Yarn Universe on Instagram or Facebook so I can see your creation and give you a big thumbs up. And also you will be automatically entered in my monthly giveaway of one of my paid patterns. So I'm so looking forward to seeing what you're making with my patterns. It's always such a joy to, to see what you created. So thank you so much, lovelies. Happy creating, bye.